So the first thing we're going to do, everybody, is let's touch on a quick agenda. Um, we're going to go through, Matt's going to start us off after I go through this with an overview of Starship. Then I'm going to do an overview of ScanForce, uh, the solutions we provide, and then get into more detail related to how the, the picking and shipping side of our, our WMS solutions work. Uh, that's obviously what links into the Starship side of things. So that's what we'll focus on. And then the product that we're going to be highlighting is our integration from the mobile app to uh, Starship. So I'm going to go over that in an overview and then end with a demo and wrapping things up with uh, a Q&A session. So I believe we had blocked an hour for this. Uh, we have this set to be roughly on about a 30-minute timeline here. So we're going to give you guys part of your day back here. Um, and for any of you, any of those of you that would have registered for our, our previous webinar uh, a couple of months ago, this will be a repeat for you guys. I do believe we saw some of the partners that maybe attended the first one or on this one as well. No hard feelings if you guys drop off, um, but if you are going to stay on, this is going to be uh, somewhat of a, re a review from that previous one. All right, so let's jump into this here. I'm going to go ahead and start the slides here. Matt, I'm going to kick it over to you. All right. Thank you, Steve. And as Steve mentioned, thanks, everyone, for taking time for our webinar. Um, all right. So real quick, a little bit about the technologies. As you see, we are founded in 1987, so we've been developing integrated shipping solutions for over 35 years now. Uh, at VTech, that is all we do. Um, the other nice thing is we're not outsourcing anything, so things like development, QA, most importantly, our support team um, is all, you know, in-house. We're, we're not outsourcing anything. Um, over those 35 years that we've been in business, we've actually had over 10,000 companies that have used our integrated shipping solutions to help streamline their their day-to-day -day, uh, shipping activities and today you're going to see how we, we came, teamed up with ScanForce to make that process even even easier so man, I'm really excited about this uh, new integration that Steve's going to cover um, but as far as ERP integrations uh, Starship does integrate with over a dozen other uh, ERPs but today of course talking about the integration with Sage 100 uh, we've been working with Sage for actually it should be oh well over 20 years now um, so we are of course a gold certified solution uh, with Sage um, and with our carrier integration, Starship does have integrations with over two dozen small parcel as well as LTL. Uh, it's really a multi-carrier, multi-mode shipping software. So really, uh, you're going to be able to process all your different type of shipments just through the, the, the Starship interface. Um, and then, of course, today, Steve is going to talk about and show that new integration where you're going to be able to actually process all your small parcel shipments without even going into uh, the Starship program. So everything's going to be actually be done from the handheld device. Uh, along with those carrier integrations, as you see, we're actually just named the 2022 UPS Premier Partner. Uh, so that's a great honor. Uh, we've been working with UPS for over 30 years now. But again, with our carrier integrations, uh, it is a certified integration. So with things like UPS, or I should say with carriers like UPS and FedEx, you know, they do require a certified label. So uh, because we're certified, all our labels are delivered to you certified. We go through those pains uh, so you don't have to. Uh, all right, Steve, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, if there's any current uh, Starship users out there, and originally with Starship, the integration that we developed between Starship and Sage 100 was what we call our link interface. And if you're using that, as you know, you really would be inside of Sage using shipping data entry, uh, clicking the Starship button. Uh, same thing, you know, if you're using ScanForce with that link interface, you know, you're going to be able to do everything through ScanForce, through the handheld, but you would still have to go to Sage, go into shipping data entry, and click that sh um, that Starship button. So, again, Steve's going to get into showing you how you can eliminate being inside of uh, Sage altogether. Uh, but with this new interface, it does leverage uh, Starship's BOI or business object interface. I also call it the direct interface uh, because without the ScanForce uh, new feature, you can actually just work inside of uh, Starship. So again, no need to be inside a Sage. Uh, so that's why with this interface, we were, we were able to team up with Steve and team and, and come up with this, this new integration that again, Steve's going to go over. Um, but again, the nice thing with BOI is we're going to be able to just ship right from the handheld device. Um, with BOI compared to Link, uh, you, you think about Link where, okay, with that integration of Starship, we're actually limited. It, it, it's more of, okay, Starship is being forced to push information uh, from Sage. So, hey, shipping data entry, here's the data, Starship, we're going to push it to you. Uh, this business object interface is more of 
uh, an, I, I would say open where, okay, now we can actually use Sage user defined fields. Um, we don't have to just be looking at shipping data entry tables or fields inside of, of Sage. You know, we, we can bring in, I have customers, for example, third party type shipment. Oh yeah, we have a user defined field that lives in customer maintenance or maybe it's on the sales order. But again, with the uh, BOI interface, it, it is just, it opens up to the a lot more data mappings of fields that we can pull from Sage 100. So it can come from customer maintenance, it could come from the sales order, it can come from CI item tables, all right? But really the nice thing with the interface and with the way we can look at a lot of different information, it really helps streamline the whole shipping process. And again, that, that's why we're talking uh, today with Steve and this new integration because that interface that we're leveraging really allows for a simple shipping process. Um, now, with this interface compared to the link interface, uh, a lot of advanced features, uh, again, because it's more of open, uh, being able to see a lot more of the Sage fields. Uh, we even have a built-in custom write back feature where, you know, if you want to start ship to send back some additional information. Uh, for example, I have a lot of clients that, oh yeah, we have a user defined field on the invoice that we tell Starship to push back our negotiated rate with the carrier. Uh, that way before someone updates those invoices, you're going to be able to see, oh yeah, this is what we're charging the customer, but hey, you know what, this is what we're going to be charged by the carrier. And then if you're shorting yourself, um, you know, of course, someone can always make an adjustment. So, uh, again, uh, a lot more flexibility with this interface. And with Starship Cloud, uh, kind of nice things with Starship Cloud is because it's cloud, it, it is a full cloud solution. We host it. We maintain it. So you're always going to be on the latest version of Starship. There's no longer doing upgrades or maintaining each of your workstations. Um, you know, especially to a lot of IT teams now, they don't want to have an, a server or, you know, cost of, to maintain servers. And every couple of years, we have to buy new servers. So it really gets rid of those headaches. You know, we take care of everything. We're going to host everything. Uh, the other thing with cloud is it is SaaS based and we have different plans based on your shipping volume. So we have small parcel plans, small parcel LTL plans, uh, but with each, each of those uh, plans, you do gain access to unlimited users. You're gonna gain access to all the carriers. So again, if anyone's using the Starship on-prem version, that's more a la carte, where yeah, I need UPS, I need FedEx, I need you know ABC's trucking and XPO, uh, I need five users. So you would have to purchase all that individually. And then of course, with on-prem, there's an annual maintenance, just like Sage does. So with cloud, you can prepay uh, for a year if you want or higher. We, we do give uh, discounts, additional discounts if you want to uh, prepay for additional months or years. Uh, but you could also just go month to month. And if you're concerned where, you know, hey, I, I might be seasonal and, uh, you know, during six months of the year, I'm slow, six months, I'm busy. Uh, you can always switch plans at any time. Uh, we actually have a nice portal you can go into and switch plans. You can even do it a month ahead of time. But point being is you're not locked into one plan where yeah, I'm paying for, you know, X amount of shipments when I only need uh, a minimum when I'm not busy. Okay. Um, so again, nice thing is you're going to gain access to all the carriers, all our unlimited users. You can have as many users inside Starship as you like. We're going to maintain it. Um, and with those users, of course, you could even set up uh, security roles where you, know, maybe you want just some users to get into our reporting or matrix tool, the dashboard program. Uh, so you could have just a dashboard user where they can't get into Starship to actually process shipments. All right. So I think that's it. Now with that, I will now hand it off to Steve so he can cover um, ScanForce and our new integration. All right. Thanks, Matt. All right. So I'm going to jump first into basically an overview slide of, of who we are. Uh, I'm sure some of you know who we are, some of you may not. So the, the, the basics of ScanForce is that we're a developer that, that creates mobile applications related to inventory. Um, we have uh, programs and apps that run on iOS, Android, uh, so pretty much we even have some people running this on PCs. Uh, but there are solutions designed to automate uh, your inventory transactions and streamline processes. And the uh, three categories, if you will, on the bottom simply speak first to the fact that we, we've been doing this for a little while here. We've been around since the early 90s as a developer, launched ScanForce in the current style or version as you see it today back in 2007 to the uh, partner channel. We have locations all over the place. And uh, we have a, a ton of installs out there. So we're pretty well versed at, at setting this up. One of the key things that sets our solution apart from a technological side of things is the solutions on these mobile devices function whether you're connected or disconnected. So we have that highlighted there. We perfected the solution use whether you're connected or disconnected, which is super important if you're actually truly trying to have a mobile solution. 
You don't want to be stuck out in a warehouse or if there are mobile sales out in the field, if you're all of a sudden disconnected, you're able to continue on and you're able to um, complete transactions with lookups and uh, data validations as well. And we have some notable customers listed there that are using our mobile platform from Penske Trucks to FedEx, Whirlpool, MTV, and up down the list. Now, in general, what we do are three, or I'm sorry, four basic categories there, from our WMS over to mobile sales, that's creating orders, invoices out in the field, emailing off copies and doing some credit card processing and uh, signature capture, to label printing, getting barcodes on items on the inbound side, if you're doing manufacturing, making products, or even on the outbound side for shipping. And obviously, that's one of the things we're talking about today, but that also could apply if somebody has a situation where you need to have compliance labels. One of your customers says, Hey, listen, products coming out, they have to look like this with this particular label on in this particular spot. We help with that. And you can also print not only from those mobile uh, programs, but from your Sage system as well. The last one there's our manufacturing. Again, we're not going to get into that today, but from bill of materials all the way through production management, a make to order option, and we're still supporting some legacy work order customers. If any of these interest you and you don't already have our solutions, uh, I encourage you to reach out to us. We have a, a pretty extensive process to evaluate whether these solutions make sense for you that fit your needs. So we encourage you to reach out to us and get some more information on those. In general, uh, there are three categories that really set us apart from solutions out there on the market. Speed is the first one. And what we mean by that is the speed of the programs returning a valid scan and just how quickly the programs run. You don't want to sit there and have somebody looking at a screen waiting for it to return a valid scan. We actually did a million record challenge several years ago. We should probably update that to like a two million record challenge now. But that's still a ton of data on there. And when we did this, it took like a day to get the data to import in using VI and then uh, to the actual Sage system then. But once we had it in there with the ScanForce mobile programs, it was less than three hundredths of a second. So these programs that we've developed are very, very uh, quick. The next part is they're intuitive. There's really almost no training when you're using our, our mobile apps. They're easy to use. Uh, not only what I mentioned on speed, you don't want to have somebody sitting out there waiting for a program. You also don't want to have somebody, as I listed here, sitting there asking, well, what am I supposed to do next? Again, they're very intuitive. And probably the biggest one is our support and our dev team behind all of our products. We do everything all in-house from a development standpoint, so we can be very agile and, and, and quick to, to fix any issues that may come up. We also don't do anything like limit support cases. So if you guys have an issue, you call in, you have unlimited access to our team that know not only our products obviously very well, but they're very, very well versed in Sage as well, which prevents any kind of you know, finger pointing. When there's an issue, it might be a safe problem, not even ours, but our team is very good at identifying that and working through the partner channel to make sure that we identify those and fix the problems. All right, so now I wanna go through a little bit of a pick, pack, and ship review. Um, one thing that, that I've been saying a lot lately is we've always talked about pick, pack, and ship, but now we really can ship. So something that Matt mentioned and I'm gonna to touch on here in a minute is you've always been able to use our programs to pick and quote unquote ship orders, getting them back to your stage system, but then you need to go ahead and launch uh, Starship and trigger the labels to print out. We've closed that loop. So this integration we have here now um, allows you to go ahead and complete that process all from a mobile program here. And what I wanna do is touch on some of the definitions first that we're, I'm gonna be talking about. First leading the list here is picking. So that would be if you're staging orders. So you don't wanna necessarily have the invoice created yet. The items aren't leaving your warehouse yet, but you need to stage the orders and see that these items have been picked. So SO picking is one of our programs. And after that, then you have what we refer to as a checking and packing uh, uh, program. That's where you have orders that are already staged. Now they get packed up and shipped out the door. You also have the ability to do a one-step process. So even that might be your, your typical process to do a pick pack ship. Sometimes you have orders that just need to get out the door, um, so you can just do sales order shipping. Or if your business doesn't need to do pick pack ship, you can do that with one step as well. Another concept that we have a lot of our customers using is uh, splitting up sales orders into uh, split pick sheets. So when you have a situation where maybe you have a ton of items on a particular order, or maybe you simply just have your warehouse uh, broken down to two sections that you want to split out. So we allow you to do that then. Um, and it allows multiple pickers to work on that same sales order at the same time, picking it without worrying about, you know, hey, has this line already been picked or, or who's working on this section of the order or not, it separates that out, puts it on the mobile programs so they can walk through and pick the orders efficiently. Any company that has those large sales orders, like I mentioned, or they separate their warehouse out could use this particular uh, feature of ours. Wave picking, it almost feels like wave picking and split picking are opposites. So wave picking is where you're grouping multiple orders into a single pick. Maybe you have just a few line items on each order, um, but you wanna have somebody out there 
going and picking a bunch of orders all at the same time. Companies that need this would be if you have just one person out there and they're gonna pick five orders. Uh, well, they don't wanna walk the warehouse five separate times. Well, group them together, send them out there one time. They pick all orders all at one time, walk into the warehouse. Uh, or if you have a high volume of sales orders where you might still have a team out there picking, but they need to pick multiple orders at one time, group them together into waves, send them out there to pick each wave. Directed picking is used with all methods of picking, really, with our solutions. Um, this can be used in a multi-bin and non-multi-bin environment. Non-multi-bin just simply tells them what bin location it's in, and it can only be in one, based on the way Sage is set up. With multi-bin, um, it can get uh, a pretty complex from the standpoint of how you set it up, but again, very easy to use. The idea behind this is it's going to tell the picker where to go and what to get. And with the multi-bin environment, it's driven by the pre-allocations that are determined based on the settings in the multi-bin solution. There's a ton of methods available to do this. So those pre-allocations, that happens at the sales order side of things. So it can happen, so you set up the criteria, and then it can happen at multiple options here, and it will be done automatically. So you can go in there, do the allocations manually. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It isn't very efficient. So the points where you can have this automatically trigger would be when you create the sales order. Now, let me back up for a second. And what this means when it's been pre-allocated is those items are reserved from that bin location for that particular order. So that's great. So you know it's, it's set up for this particular order. Nobody else for a different order is gonna come and pick that. So it really allows you to control your quantities then. So it can be done at sales order entry if that works for you. It also can be done at the picking sheet printing, even if that's just a preview. So if you do a print preview then, that'll trigger those two allocations to occur. Another option would be is when a receipt of goods is posted. And with our mobile programs, you can do a receipt of goods and have it post real time. It'll then trigger all the allocations for those items to happen against sales orders that have those items on them. The last one, probably the most popular, is uh, triggering that from the scanner. So you'll see in a minute when I go to pick an order here, uh, it asks you for a sales order number. When you select that, that's where it's gonna trigger all those allocations to happen, and they happen instantaneously. And it's most popular because um, it's not uh, reserving these prior to the time they're being picked. So it really allows you to be more real time. All right, so now let's talk about this integration piece that we've written here that, that closes that shipping loop, as I mentioned. So this really, I know Matt touched on this, I'll go through this pretty uh, quickly here, but what this does is it allows you to complete that shipping process right from the mobile program. So we're capturing package details. It's gonna be automatically populated based on settings that you have set up here. You group the items on the mobile program by package or box. As I'm packing boxes, I go ahead and indicate the next one and so on. Um, all the shipping details though are still handled by Starship. So there any, isn't anything extra you need to do. Um, we're passing that back over and triggering those labels to print upon that import back into your Sage system. So if you're using Starship right now, that's great. It's basically going to remain the same for you here. Um, you'll be able just to complete that right from the mobile program. The process, and let's talk about this for a minute here if you were not to use the scanners, okay? So we're taking a step back here talking about how you can use this right now. With our mobile programs that are not a multi-bin uh, environment here, so this would be our fundamentals or core version of our software, you have a sales order, then you can go ahead and ship it. It goes into shipping data entry, and as Matt pointed out earlier, go back to PC, launch Starship, and complete the process. With our advanced premium or premier versions, you have that middle step you can take. You have your sales order, you stage it or pick it, then you go to checking and packing, then it goes back to shipping data entry, then you pull up Starship, and then you go out to the printers and get that. So the idea is, is to streamline that process. Now, there are a couple of requirements we want to cover here as well as far as this new piece here. So you need to have one of our warehouse uh, modules, and you also need to have the Starship cloud version. One thing it does not require is we have our labeling piece that I mentioned at the very beginning of this. That's for, uh, again, I, uh, item labels on the inbound side or compliance labels or labeling items at manufacturing. This does not require that. Again, uh, Starship's handling all the label printing. And the way that this is handled as far as purchasing this, uh, Scanforce is uh, selling this. It's available for subscription only, and it's just at $1,800 per year to go ahead and get this piece added. And what is this doing? We've touched on this, but it's very a simple process here. It's bypassing that need to walk back to a PC. Sounds simple, right? But there's a ton of time that is saved by doing this. You're completing that process, labels automatically print, printing, shipping documents and packing list already done with a simple tap of a button from a mobile program. That all sounds great. We've done a lot of talking. Let's actually show you guys the software now. So I'm gonna get out of my PowerPoint here. 
And on my screen, before I pull up anything else, I'm going to comment on what this is. If anyone has uh, used our software or viewed a demo or a previous webinar of ours, you'll know this is the uh, emulation of the mobile app. I'll reiterate, it runs on iOS, Android, doesn't matter. If you are looking at our software, we do take time to walk through with you guys what uh, devices are best to, to be used from durability, you know, the ruggedness, do you need to scan from a distance, like long range scanning, things like that. But no matter which device ends up being the best fit, this is the way our mobile programs look. So the first thing you do is log in. You can have as many users set as you want. The licensing is per device, not per user. So you could have, for example, five scanners and have 10 people logging into them. So you select who you are, it's password protected. You don't have to have one. I don't have one set here, but what that does is it allows people to share scanners without um, having someone log in with someone else's permissions and it does support multiple companies. When I hit accept, this is our main menu. So this has order processing, our inventory transactions and utilities, but I'm gonna tap on order processing. That's where you have things like receiving, which again, we're not gonna get into today, but we have other webinars that hit on that. And you'll see I have picking, Checking and packing, again, we covered these earlier here, and then the sales order shipping. For the purpose of this webinar here today, I'm just gonna do the sales order shipping, that one-step process, because it's a little repetitive. I'd be basically showing you guys the same thing over and over again. So here is my Sage system, and here is an order that I have created in the system here already. Let me pull this up. And you'll see here, it, when I created this, it defaulted to UPS ground, okay? And here are my lines on here. And the UPS ground, so it knows on the mobile side of things based on the shipping uh, method here, it knows what method to go ahead and prompt for in terms of packages. One piece I hit on very quickly earlier is we store package details ahead of time. So we're gonna need to know which shipping carrier it is. That's where we look. You'll see I have two items on here and notice the order here. So I have item 6655 and D1000. Now the bins have already been pre-allocated. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, we can go into a lot more detail in, in uh, another meeting with you guys on that one. But what that means is just simply, I did this ahead of time. The pre-allocations are there, so the bins are set. The reason I point that out is based on the bin locations, on the mobile device, you'll see D1000 actually shows up first. So that's where that sorting comes into play with that directed picking I mentioned earlier. So let's actually do this now. So let me go on to the scanner here. I'm going to launch sales order shipping. Now, what you can do is print off a, a copy of that order with a barcode if you want to shoot barcodes here or key it in or do a lookup. Now, what it's doing here is it's looking real time back to my Sage system here, and it lists out all the orders that are available for me to go ahead and ship right now. I have the ability to search by the customer name or the sales order number. I also could take my finger and scroll down. I'm using the mouse, but I'll take this moment to comment on that too. I'm obviously using the mouse here because this is an emulation. When somebody's using this, they're tapping on the screen with their fingers and scanning barcodes and things like that. So let me get to the end here and grab that last order that I was just in. So what it does here is it's gonna connect up and it's gonna grab that data from Sage and put it on my device locally. This links back to one of the things I first mentioned also is the ability to function even if you're disconnected. We put the data on the device that if I do become disconnected, I still have all the information on my uh, device here so that I can still get the data lookups and displays here and data validations. So now I'm into this order picking it. At the top here, it starts off with package one. When I wanna increase my packages, I simply hit this plus button and the scales button here is the shipping button. So let's start with that first item. So if I were to scan or key in an item that's not on this order, it's gonna instantly yell at me and tell me hey, it's the wrong order. Again, whether you're connected or disconnected. You'll notice also that that item 6655 is the second one because again, it's sorting, my, sorting this by bin location. So I walk through, go up to my first bin, select my item here, confirm my location, confirm my quantity. It would also validate quantity for me in bins as well. And now I'm done, you'll see that drops off. So I grab that first item. Again, validated all the information related to it. If you're tracking lot or serial numbers, it'll also know to ask for that as well. So it'll validate all of that for you. Now let's say that first item is the only thing that fit into package one. I'll hit my shipping button here. It defaults to, to a quantity of one, obviously for package one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say this weighs 10, let's say. Now, when I go off of that, then I select my package type and you'll see it's all UPS packages. If it were FedEx, it would know all the FedEx package options. So I'll grab this, defaults now into the dimensions. I accept this, move on, go to package two, grab my next item, again, confirm my bin, quantity, capture shipping information. So let's say this is 25, select my next package that I use. I use this particular box now for this item, hit accept, and now I'm done. To push my data back over within our programs, you hit this paper airplane arrow looking thing at the top. 
This gives me my overview screen that is similar to anybody else using ScanForce, but now it has this package information up top here. So if I wanted to tap on that, I can see I have two boxes in my packaging uh, information. There. It also shows me I've collected two records, and for anybody else familiar with their software also, we do a thing called uh, unresolved lines. It's, we categorize these uh, any lines that aren't completely picked or shipped as unresolved. Maybe somebody skipped a line or you simply made a keystroke error on quantities. We catch that and alert the user to that as well so you don't skip anything. Now, I'm gonna send my data back over. So now, what's happening in the background here is uh, Starship is actually uh, picking this up. So what happens is it imports back over. If the import wasn't able to connect up, or I'm sorry, if the mobile program wasn't able to connect up, you would actually get a message on the device so that you would know that uh, you, you were disconnected still. So you're never gonna lose any data or anything like that. Um, so what it is, connected up now, it's created the uh, transaction back in shipping data entry, and now Starship is uh, taking over from here. Uh, I'll pause for a second, Matt. Anything you wanna add on the Starship side of things before I, I pull this up to show everybody everything? No, so far so good, Steve. As you mentioned, now once Starship has it, you know we can use it to generate the shipping labels and any other required documents. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. I'm now back in Starship here. All right, so this is the last one that we just did here, okay? So this is the information for this. That I had a few from, from earlier in here, but here's the one we just did. Here's order 204. When I pull this up here now, so it's basically been processed through. I don't have a printer up here, and even if I did, you wouldn't see it, but the labels have now printed off. You'll see the tracking numbers in here as well. Here's all the details. Matt, again, anything you want to call out here, I'll let you call that out really quickly here. Yeah. Yep. So uh, if anyone is using the uh, original Starship desktop, uh, the cloud version, this is basically the new uh, web UI look and feel of Starship. So uh, all, same, all the same features, uh, as you see, just a, a different layout as uh, what shows, Steve is showing on the screen. Cool, and then I'll pull back up my Sage system here and go into shipping data entry just to show you guys this as well. So not only did it import over, so I'm gonna grab my batch. But when I pull this up, if I go in here, here it tells you there were you know 12 ships for this one, 15, and I go into shipping, and I pull this up and Starship is now populated back in here, the tracking information. So again, we're all from the mobile program. As far as the user is concerned, we're showing you some additional components of this, but as far as the person using this, I, I pick and ship my order, I hit a button, my labels come out and I'm done. So it's that simple. Again, closing that loop so you truly get to pick, pack, and ship right from the mobile programs. All right, so at this point now, I know where we said we keep it to about a half an hour here. So I'll pull back up our slide here. This has our contact information on here. Uh, if you want further information, want to set up a one-on-one -on -one demo, uh, 